they just can't seem to be on time. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started, y'all. Thank y'all for joining. Uh, this is year three. This is our third year of doing resolution substitution. I went back and looked at that video, y'all, and I was so impressed with, with the way it turned out uh, three years ago. And um, it made me even want to get back into doing my weekly video blog that I used to do. I don't know, because I did all the production and all that stuff. So we'll see. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we started down this path talking about res uh, relationship PTSD. Uh, folks wanted to ask about emotions and, and, you know, how to identify deal breakers when emotions get involved. And I asked the question, what deal breakers? And this was from Celeste, y'all, who is sitting there on the call with us. Um, so we, we looked at some stop signs, not red flags, to say, hey, y'all need to stop, you know, stop going past these stop signs, right? And then we, uh, 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 Melanie asked us, and I, Melanie's not on yet, Melanie asked us to talk about temptation. So, um, and when we first did it, that first week we talked about temptation, y'all were saying y'all didn't really have temptations. Somebody said the only temptation they had was ice cream, and somebody said, William said, ice cream. Somebody else said candy. And I just don't think Melanie, in fact, I confirmed the next week with Melanie, if that was what she was talking about. And she says, nope, that wasn't it. So we all know what temptation she was talking about. So why is temptation so tempting, right? That was the question. And then last week, um, last week we did, uh, the devil didn't make you do it. So part four, Part four is temptation, but here's the deal. Trying to love two is so hard to do. And y'all are gonna see why I've entitled it that way. But you all see the you all see the graphic behind me, right? How many times have you have you gone into a temptation and both seemed right? Anybody can anybody relate to that? Both ways seemed right. You know, you knew what God, God's word said, but somehow, for some reason, both of them seemed right. Anybody ever been there? Well, okay, maybe not. But anyway, trying to love two is so hard to do. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. We asked y'all to share your greatest temptations and all that kind of stuff and why are we tempted so easily. And I said, let's talk, let's get real. And boy, y'all just, <laughs> y'all chickened out on me. Y'all get it? Chickened out? Y'all missed that, didn't you? That was pretty cool. Hold on, let me do it again. Y'all, I asked y'all, let's get real, and y'all chickened out on me. That's come on now. Y'all gotta y'all gotta say James, that. James, you're corny. You are so <laughs> corny. Stop all that. <laughs> anyway, hold on. I gotta let somebody else in. Uh Chase is trying to get in. All right, y'all. So um, so and we talked about this idea of not having temptations. We talked about the idea of not having temptations, and I agree that there are times when you won't be tempted by Satan. Uh, that's my belief. Um, because you remember when Jesus was tempted after having uh, uh, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights? Um, uh, the, dev the scriptures teach that, that the the devil, when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So I do believe that there might be a time when Satan is not tempting you, okay? But look at what it says. He departed from him for a season. So don't get too comfortable in your state of not being tempted if, that, if you find yourself in that situation when you're not being tempted because, y'all, Satan is just gathering some further information to see how he can come back at you. Anybody ever been there before, before I go much further, anybody ever been there before where you, you weren't being tempted and then all of a sudden it comes back at you? Anybody ever been there? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Hold on. Let me see. That was uh, Brandy, right, Brandy? Yes, sir. Brandy, you got such a distinct voice. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know. Okay. So, so uh, and then I believe it was Celeste. No, I know it was Celeste who said she was just rocking along real good and all of a sudden, bam, a temptation hit her, y'all, and she failed. Brandy, I mean, uh, Celeste, didn't you tell me that? 
in, in so many words. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, okay, and, and, then, and then Job, if you've ever read the, the book of Job, um, God and Satan have a discussion about uh, Job. Be, and, be, and Satan says to the Lord in verse 9, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. So what that should tell us is that there are times when Satan is just looking at us, y'all. And, and the fact that he said, have you not made a hedge about him? Don't, don't you get the impression that Satan had been trying to get to Job? Do y'all not, not see that? I see it. I don't know. Okay, um, I don't mean to do a whole bunch of uh, reviews, so let me get past these. All right, um, we can't say when we're tempted that God is the one tempting us, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bring it forth death, okay? Keep that in mind, uh, but what I wanted you to see there was that there is a process that goes on when we are tempted. We don't just do like Celeste said, temptation comes, bam, it hits us and we fall and we're, it, it doesn't happen that way. We actually process this thing and y'all see the way she's smiling? She knows that that's right. You know, she knows, <laughs> I know that's a glamour shot or whatever, but she knows that when we are tempted, we actually go through a process and before you know it, we have put a plan into action. So the devil didn't make you do it is the point that we wanted to make there. Okay. First Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. And then right after that, there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That means you can't sit there and say, that was a new temptation. Nobody else had ever had that temptation, and that's why you failed. You can't say that, right? Are you sharing your screen right now? I thought I was. Hold on. I thought I was. I guess I wouldn't. Oh, shit. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, 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 look, I noticed you were looking away, and I, I didn't know if you were just talking from notes or what. But um, Yeah, okay. Let me try. It's saying something is happening. There is an error code. So let me see, why is it not sharing? Um, hold on. I guess it's not going to allow screen sharing tonight. One participant can share at a time. All right, that's right, that's right. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm not going to be able to share. It's all taken care of before, before 8 o'clock. I don't quite understand what's going on. Okay, you just get back in your padded cell <laughs> and leave me alone. Uh, it, it was already, I had already told it to share the screen. That's why I was wondering why y'all didn't think my chicken joke was so good. Did y'all see the chicken go across the screen? I did. Somebody said they didn't or did? I didn't. Okay, well, okay. Uh, it's, it's, mine's been on gallery view the whole time, so I'm seeing everybody else. Okay, hold on. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, no, so it's not going to allow sharing tonight. I'm sorry. So y'all just going to have to trust me. <laughs> yeah, watch out now. And by the way, that, that, <laughs> that's the same thing. That's the same thing Satan says when he comes to you with a temptation. He said, trust me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um, okay okay so it, the first part says there's no new temptation but the second part says but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able what does that say to you what does that mean to you that part right there somebody God is always in control of the temptation God is always in control. He's going to allow it or withhold grace and mercy. You know, you're not really out there by yourself like you think you're um, dealing with temptation. 
Ooh. That's what it said to me. Ooh, you're not out there all by yourself. Keep that thought. Look, 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 Brandy gave you a high five. Oh, oh Brandy, were you trying to raise your hand to say something? That was just a hand clap. Okay, hand clap. Good, good, good. Yeah. Every once in a while, y'all, even in a padded cell, you can get an answer right. <laughs> I think it's the morphine they got her on. <laughs> but at any rate, okay. Uh, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Okay. Y'all keep that thought for a second. And then it says, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Who? All right. Now, you know, All right. uh, I'm sorry. What did you say, Felicia? I was just preaching. Go ahead. I'm like, all right. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Where's my mute button? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> okay, y'all. Look, look. Mm -hmm. Okay. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Wait, do, does anybody hear anything else in there uh, connected to what Felicia said, that God is in control? Or was that you, Felicia, or was that Brandy? Me. Okay. Okay, what else do you hear in that, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able? What else do you hear? We don't have to give in to temptation. It's a decision we make if we do give in to it. But we okay. have the, uh, the ability to escape it. Something happens. You just got to uh, watch and, and, and make a conscious decision, you know, to really think and, and not give in to the temptation. But, so, oh, okay. Sister I guess I... Hold, hold on, hold on. I got to admit somebody. Um, go ahead, Susan, since you're going to scream at me. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I kind of hear what we're, what we're able to handle and deal with when you talk about able. You know, whatever, whatever, however strong we are, you know, being able to being able to handle it or not. God okay. knows what our strengths and weaknesses are. Okay. So he will take us only so far or let the devil take us so far. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're we're about to get there. Okay, but the but going back to what Sister Merlin said, every temptation that comes upon us, y'all, we are able to handle it. Can't be. How how can that how can that be, and we still fall? Chase, I mean, uh, not Chase, uh, Celeste. How can that be? How in the world could you have fallen, if God is faithful. That means every, does that mean every single time? We don't know our own strengths. I believe we don't know our own strengths, maybe, at certain times. And we know what, we know what it is that will tempt us, but I, believe, I don't believe we know what our strengths are. Okay, but he says every single time, if that's what God is faithful means, Celeste, speak to me. Um, I you? agree with... I agree with Susan, um, you know, th that sometimes you don't know what you're tempted until you're faced with it because, you know, you, you have that plan. You have that plan where, okay, if this happened, then I'm, this is going to be my response. If this happened, it's going to be my response. But if you don't consider something to be a weakness and you already have it like, oh, yeah, I'm good in that area, and then all of a sudden that area come up and you're, you, you, you discover that you're not. So that's what I mean by it came out of nowhere. I don't mean like it literally like, oh, well, look at this new thing. You know, I'm not saying it like that. I was saying it like I mentally re prepared that it was not something I could, I, that I could ever fall to, but that's what I ended up falling to, which took me by surprise. So to answer your question, as far as if God um, makes a way for us, the answer is you, you just, the only thing that I can come up with is you ignore it. You ignore what God is trying to do. I mean, there's, there's no other explanation. You know, you see the escape, you see the route, and you just ignore it and keep moving forward. You know, your, your emotions, your mental state, whatever it is that causes you to look past making that, um, that ungodly decision, you just simply ignore it. That it it's on you. It was, it was on me. There's no excuse. Oh, ouch. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so Kim says to everybody in the chat, God does his part, we don't do ours. And you all may recall, yeah. Can you all may you all may recall, hold on, Chase. You all may recall, I said about two or three weeks ago 
God does everything he can to keep us from sinning. Go ahead, Chase. I was just going to add to that what Celeste said, that, that it, it's, it's free will. I mean, we, you know, just like anything else that we, um, that we are doing in our life and our Christian walk, I mean, you have the decision to do it or don't do it. Now, at the moment of choosing something that, that you may be tempted by, it's always a conversation in your head. There's never a, a, oops, I just fell into this situation. No, no, there's always things that lead up to it, this conversation. Depending on what the thing that you're falling to, um, you always have a conversation in your head. You choose whether you want to engage in um, certain conversations that could lead to certain situations, or, you, uh, or you'll stop that right there in his chat. Like, look, no, I'm not going to go there. Um, because God do give us a way out because you have a decision. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to indulge in this conversation. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, not pursue this kind of talk or action or whatever the, the thing is. But because we all know that when we sin, it's, it's sending to something that we like. So it's not always an easy conversation to have. Like you actually want this thing. So right. it's not like you're saying, oh, this one thing that I don't care for at all. We're not tempted by stuff we don't want. So obviously that conversation has to be strong in our head as far as what we want, if that yeah. makes sense. Chase, your microphone is doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, can you switch microphones oh. or, or whatever? But everything you said we heard, it was just a bunch of buzzing or something around it. But everything you said was good. Let me let me go back to something Celeste said. And y'all, look at the, oh, y'all can't look. <laughs> the verse right before what we were just reading, there has no temptation, yada, yada, yada. The verse right before that, Celeste says, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And then right after that, it says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. See, sometimes y'all, we, we get so righteous in our own minds. We think we are strong. We think we got this. And that's when Satan says, oh, I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. Okay, game on. Let's go. Okay. But yeah, this God is faithful every time. Okay, but, but, but don't miss this point either. It says, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Now, wait, 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 wait. Who's doing the tempting? Hello? Self. Satan. 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 Satan's Satan. doing the tempting. Okay. Do you think the devil could be trusted to only go so far? Absolutely not. Please. You know better. Thank you, Brandy. There is no way. That, what, let me tell you what that means to me. What that means to James Bradley is that every time I'm tempted, God is right there making sure Satan doesn't go beyond. Oh, y'all, come on now. That's a, uh, Alicia, you know what kind of moment that is. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, say it, Alicia. Go on, say it. I'm not. I'm going to be good. My hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me laugh Dang. don't make me laugh no, no, Stop. No. that is a hallelujah shout moment right there James oh yes sir Archie yeah that verse uh, prior to the verse you read lest a man think he stand then he should fall um, and went out and uh, talked about uh, God will promote us and be able can bear and make a way of escape. If you look at the previous verse that lest a man think he stand, then he should fall, that's dealing with self. Um, we're, the way we're able to bear, God won't put more on us than what we can bear, but the way of escape is us not uh, confiding and trusting in our own self uh, that we can overcome. When we're like, we, a lot of times we fall when we rely on our own strength. And not trust in God to be our way of escape. Okay, Archie. 
you were breaking up worse than than Chase was. Oh, hold on, I gotta let somebody in. Um, yeah, okay, but but and I heard I heard most of what you said, but we're about to get to that part where it talks about, but God will make a, a way also to escape. Because y'all, okay, wait. Anybody ever been in a situation where you felt like you had to escape? Anybody? Yes, yeah. sir. Uh -huh. Ooh, somebody tell me about that. I can tell you. There was a situation. And you, the thing is, is that when you're in the situation, you, you have a gut feeling, what they call intuition. This is Brandy talking. And so in that situation, I had a feeling that I should not have proceeded, and but I did anyway. And I should have listened to my intuition because it, it cost me a lot. <laughs> so you get into these situations, you you get the feeling. Like there's, there's something that you feel. You can't exactly pinpoint it. And whatever it is that you're feeling that may not be the right thing, that's your, that's your cue to stop what you're doing and go the other way. Okay. Now, okay. So, so we do agree that God makes sure that we are not tempted above that we're able. Do y'all agree that Satan can't be trusted? So God has to be there every time. Okay. Y'all good with that? Okay. Yeah. Now watch this. Um, but we're with the temptation also make a way to escape. Do y'all hear the fact that he uses the term escape, do y'all not hear that we're already in the trap? Oh, oh, Alicia, get the preacher on the line. Let's sing that. Come on. My hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not going to get the preacher. No. Oh, my gosh. We are already in the trap. But even though we're in the trap, God still makes a way for us to escape. He would not have used the word escape if there was not danger. Oh, y'all, come on now. Some, somebody talk to me right here. Who have I not heard from? Amelia, I haven't heard from you. Cretia, L, come on now. Jamal, good to see you back, Jamal. I know Jamal is a lot of times working at the same time he's on these calls, but I'm just looking for somebody to say something right here. Anybody except Gwendolyn Brewer? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody. Talk to me. I think that's a good point. You know, I never never asked it, never heard it said that way. He also makes a way to escape. Ooh. Ooh I'm telling you, y'all, these are shouting moments right here. I mean, that's like going to the hospital with... Uh, pillows and pads all behind you, all around you, and good medicine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to, because I'm, I'm trying to get to somewhere tonight. Okay. Um, Jamal had a procedure on his throat yesterday, not going to talk because I am still sore. I ain't mad at you, my brother. All right. You just keep that going and uh, keep medicating. We're going to keep praying for you. Okay, y'all. James, I have a question. Oh, Lord. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So when we're talking about the temptation, it brings me to the thought that we have the power that that is within us when we got baptized, the same power that Jesus was given, um, to, um, the, the same power that Jesus was given is given to us also. So but when we um, go into our temptation, there's still a limitation there that we have. And as the, 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 because I would say 90% we will do it, but that 10% is that, is that, um, is the love of the Lord or grace or mercy that's, that's being beguiles us or, or just holding us or helping us or hedge around us so that we won't totally be left out there with no, no shield and no armor. So that's, you know, I, I look at it like that. He'll God allow us, but he won't, um, He'll allow us to make the mistakes, but he won't let us stay out there too long because for whatever reasons, blah, 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 for time's sake. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, well, I, I want to disagree with you. Uh, okay. God will let us stay out there as long as we want to stay out there. 
I don't think that's what this passage says. God, see, it goes back to what several commented on a minute ago. Uh, several said, it's still our choice. God has the power to keep us from sinning. He could stop us from sinning, right? I mean, <laughs> if you're in there trying to, um, give me, give me, well, let's talk about what uh, Melanie wanted to talk about. If you in there and and you're trying to have sex, God can make it such that you can't get your button loose. <laughs> Y'all ain't going there with me. Oh, hold on. Nope. Yeah, that's yeah. true. No, it is look, true. Look, the button not the problem. <laughs> Talk to me, will you? Talk to me, will you? I'm just saying, but the button is not the problem. We need to keep something else from uh, from getting loose. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that there. But, hey, <laughs> William is not chicken. The ice, uh, okay, but but y'all get my point. God God does have the. I like to use analogies to help us to really get the point. God has the power to keep us from sinning. But as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, and I think Archie had a problem with what I said, the reason God does not force us and stop us from sinning is because if he did, we would not have a way to prove our love to him. And so then when we sin, when we fall to the temptation, at that point, we don't love God. Mm. Mm. True. Y'all hear that? There rat goes pee? that. It's so quiet, you can hear a rat pee on cotton. Go ahead, Susan. <laughs> there goes that deny self and choose God. You have to deny your own fleshly self. Right. And God, according to 1013, God has done everything that he needs to do. And it's at that point, according to Celeste and several others, Brandy and several others, it's at that point, we sit there and we say, I don't care, God. Huh? We say, I know I have the strength. But actually, we don't say that. Because we, you know why we don't say that? You know why we don't acknowledge the fact that we know we have the strength? It's because we want to use that as an excuse after we've fallen. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I was, hello. Hello. I was, uh, I was told that anytime that we sin, we have to take, we have to take God out of his position. So anytime that we, we sin, we have to bring God down. But you know, but you know, from from up high, you know, we have to bring him all the way down, where we don't reverence him and we don't think about um, him in order to sin. So it's almost like I did this analogy with um, a couple of the uh, young ladies when I was teaching them, is that you know you can raise both of your hands. That's what God is at. Just imagine, and then as soon as you have, as soon as you sin, then you have to bring your hand down. Like you really have to, you can never keep them up because you you can't keep God at the top if you're sinning. Like you really can't. It's, it's, it won't work. <laughs> right. So. Right. And 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 Chase, keep that thought. Cause and your your microphone is making it really difficult for us to hear you. Um, um I don't know if you can change microphones. Um, uh, okay. Brandy, okay. hold that thought. Hold, I see hold your hand, on. Brandy. Celeste, what were you saying? Um, I was just going to say, like, your, your opener, I completely understand the correlation between if you love me, keep, keep my commandments. But I, I don't know if it's, if we should go as far to say that we don't love God when we see it. Um, we've separated ourselves. We've chosen ourselves above, you know, uh, in that moment. But to say it blanket like that, that we don't love God, I think that's kind of, I think that's, that's, that's a bit of a, 
a, a stretch to say. Yeah. yeah. We don't love God when we fall and don't turn back completely and restore ourselves because to love God even if you fall according to the word is that if you love me you keep my commandments at that moment I agree with Celeste we separate ourselves but we also love God once we repent uh, unto God for our sin amongst one another so that's still love that person still has love for God when they correct their actions and their wrong okay keep that thought um uh, I know y'all can't see the screen, uh, and I don't know what's going on with uh, Zoom tonight. Um, okay, we looked at 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 10, that preceded these verses. Uh, okay, Chase is coming back, maybe on a different uh, microphone. Okay, now, in that, you all may recall, you all may recall that I pointed out in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 10, that there are five things that are absolutely forbidden. Anybody remember what they are? Lust, idolatry, fornication, tempting Christ, and murmuring. We all know what lust and idolatry is. Idolatry, by the way, it's not, it's not about the golden calf and all of that. It is whatever you look at as you know something special really special to the point to where you worship it you do what it says oh hold on you do what it says you do what he says susan you know after you call 911 susan <laughs> okay that's that's okay so y'all idolatry is not just you know, worshiping these golden calves. In fact, that's not what it's about these days. Uh, we can worship. We can worship our jobs. We can worship our spouse. We can worship our boyfriend, our girlfriend. We can worship our children. We can worship our house. We can worship our cars. All of that stuff. Fornication, y'all know about. Tempting Christ, we said that was where we know what the Word of God says, and we're just going to try Christ. And I use the analogy that Christ being like uh, our parents, and say, all right, keep it up. <laughs> keep trying me. Uh-huh. And then and then murmuring, for those of you who are single, murmuring might be, I just don't understand why I'm not married. I don't understand why God hadn't blessed me with a spouse. I've been doing all this stuff. I've been, you know, going to worship. I've been singing. I've been praying. I've been giving. I've been dabbing back to back to back to back. And you're murmuring. So be careful there. Okay. So temp temptation, trying to love too. It's so hard to do. Let me show you why I went there. So my assertion, we kind of already mentioned it. I made a statement a week or so ago, and that is when we fall to temptation, at that point, we don't love God. So let's get into that. Let me see what time it is. It is 737. Good. We got 30 minutes to deal with this. Y'all do remember and do recall this passage. Oh, y'all can't see it. Dog, on it. Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24 says, no man or woman. I hear somebody turning their pages. Lord have mercy. That's what I'm talking about. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Oh! Somebody talk to me right here. Let me read it again in case you missed it. No man Matthew 6, 24, can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Um, I will have to say both that that's operative word is serve. You know, when you serve something, that's a continuation. That's a life or state that you choose to be in. Um, I don't I still don't see so far, with, you know, uh, that it includes a sinful act that um, where you choose God, choose yourself over God, or you're disobedient to God. Um, you know, so again, that, that word serve seems like the operative word is that that's the life, that's the decision you choose to do. You, you can't do both. Okay, so 
Celeste, are you then suggesting that when we are presented with a temptation, that we don't pause and decide whether or not I'm going to serve God or whether I'm going to serve Satan? Anybody can answer. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I, can you repeat that too? At the time we are tempted, are you suggesting that at that point we don't say, do I serve God or do I serve Satan? No. Alicia, was that a no? I put it like this. I can, for me, myself, when like the thing, remember I told you like the sin that I kept going into and into and into, like in, in that process, even though it was continuing, it kept happening. No, I never had that conversation with myself, but towards the end of it, once I said no more, I realized that by me continuing in that, that, that sin, how could I then say that I'm for Christ and continue to do those things? But I had to get to that point. But I, in the beginning, that never even crossed my mind. Right. And, and I'm suggesting, Alicia, that that is the point at which it ought to cross our mind. The, the beginning. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay, look, look. He says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Let me tell you about an experience I had with my failed marriage. Um, I told y'all my wife cheated on me. I ain't ashamed to say. And I asked her a very, y'all, I asked her a question. And that question shocked me. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you the question I asked her. At the time you did your do, hold on, I got to let Gwendolyn back in. I don't know where she went. At the time you did your do, did you think about me and the kids? I want you, okay, I want y'all to put yourself in that position and I want you to hear the question that I asked. At the time you got ready to do your thing, did you think about me and the kids? Susan, why are you doing this? Because I don't think people think. I don't believe that people have their families in mind. If they do, then they won't let it go as far as it, it did. I mean, even to the point of engaging the conversation with someone that's not your husband or wife. Okay. Somebody else got a thought? Not something. even leading <laughs> okay. the more. Okay. Brandon, you say what? All sin leads back to selfishness. At the end of the day, you're thinking about yourself and how you can, how you benefit from it. And so, and then you don't think about, you're thinking about temporary, what temporary, what temporarily pleases you. Um, you're not thinking about long-term or eternal. So it's all leading back to what's good for you. Lord have mercy. Uh, and and uh, Brandy, you, you mentioned that, and I showed a scripture a couple of weeks ago uh, from Proverbs 16, 25, that says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But I also made the point, Brandy, we're not thinking about the end That's at right. that time. <laughs> <laughs> and I also said, Brandy, and y'all tell her that I'm telling the truth. I also said at that point, if we did think about the end, we wouldn't fall to the temptation. True, because we know the consequences. Hmm. Okay, but but y'all, let me get back to my, this question I asked my ex. <laughs> Do y'all see that whichever way she answered the question, it was bad? <laughs> if she said, yeah. no, I didn't think about y'all, wrong answer. 
If she said, yes, I thought about y'all and still did it, wrong answer. Either way, wrong answer. Do y'all do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, so, so how does that relate to this no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Because love is an action. Love is an action. So we're either, either we're going to choose to, um, when you do something that goes against God's word, that means that you, you're being disobedient. You're being unloving. And so you're you're making a choice. You can't, like he said, that you can, you need you can't be lukewarm. You either need to be hot or cold. So yeah. which one is it? Because you you got to make a choice. And so when you make a choice to do the opposite of God's word, then you're choosing the other master. You're choosing the opposite of love is what hate. Hate. I mean, hate. That's, that's yes. What he says right here. So that's I, what it is. Yeah, but Brandy. I think you and I are together, but others on the call are saying, I don't think it's to that point of hating God at that point. That, that's what they're struggling I'm with. I'm not saying that I think it's not the understanding of that's what your actions are, are, are meaning. I don't think that it's being taken to that extreme. Think about like how people don't, they take baptism as symbolism instead of looking at it as, as a true spiritual act. I think it depends on your maturity within your walk on how you view that. Okay. And, and I was so. Hold on, hold on. Chase is saying, go ahead, Chase. I was going to say, but it's the idea that if you're for God, you're for God. If you're against Him, you're against Him. So even if you're not consciously saying, I hate God, you know, in, in the sense of, you know, when you're disobeying Him, um, even in your mind, you know, even in our mind, it, it, let's just say in my mind when I, you know, fall short of God's glory, I don't consciously say to myself, you know, that I hate God. No, I don't think any of us do that. But if we are not doing his will, then we are against him. Period. There's nothing like if you're not doing what what he has said that we should do by being obedient. We are literally against him at that moment. So I don't, I know that we were trying to like, you know, love, hate, you know, we're on both sides of these spectrums. But uh, if he said that he loved me, you'll keep my commandments. So that means the, the opposite of that is if, if you don't keep my commandments, what does that mean in our relationship? Chase, oh my gosh, your microphone is killing us. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do. I got out and came back in. I'll just be quiet. Okay. Love y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chat with us, Chase. Chat with us on the chat. I'll I'll, I'll go. Be, but but I I I got what you said. And and Chase, you are exactly where I'm where I'm trying to be. And and by the way, Brandy, y'all in the chat says God does not want to force us to love him. Ooh, that's good right there. Okay, but but y'all, um, Okay, see what Chase just said in case y'all couldn't make it out. At that point, when I choose sin, of course I don't say I hate God. I don't ever want to admit that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't ever want to admit that. I'm a no, I'm afraid to admit that. I'm afraid to say that. You, you hear what I'm saying? I am afraid to say that, but my actions sometimes right. say it is the point. Okay, she referenced right. being with him or against him. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 30, you are either with me or you're against me. You're either helping to gather in or you're helping to scatter abroad. There is no middle ground. Okay, and I know, I know some of y'all are saying, let me tell you what I know what some of y'all are saying. And it goes to Alicia's point of, you know, when I was doing this sin, the same sin over and over and over again, some of y'all might be saying, well, okay, if I just sin one time, that don't mean that I don't love God. Okay, well, look at what Romans 6, 16 through 22 says. Know ye not. Look at this now, listen. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, 
his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Somebody comment on that for me. Romans 6, 16 through 22, if you want to look it up for yourself in case y'all don't trust me. <laughs> know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Somebody talk to me, right, champ? Well, we all fit in that scripture every day. Archie, are you saying that there is not a single day that you go without sinning? No, I say we all fit in that scripture okay, because we all yield to sin daily. Okay, then you are saying that you can't go a day without sinning. Well, that's according to God's word. Right. Where did it because say? That, where did it say? I know it says we've all sinned and come short of the glory, but it didn't say we've all sinned every day. Is it possible? Is it not possible to go a day? It's a poss It's a. It's possible to sin and not have knowledge that you have sinned. Um, I can offend you. Can offend me and not even know it, um, uh, James. Uh, and not even know it. Omission or commission. Oh, even okay. Paul, even even Paul speaks about that we should buff our body daily. So um, over there, Romans, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you that uh, according to Romans six, uh, what is it, uh, six twenty through twenty two? Sixteen through uh, twenty two. Yes. Yes. But look, look, look at what it says. Look, 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 look listen, y'all. Listen to I'm what verse 17 up. says. Verse 17 says, right after it talked about whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, look at what verse 17 says. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, past tense, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. What do y'all hear him saying there? And that's going back to what I was saying. That's to me, that's the way that I that I see that for myself. So I have to be all about his business and, and everything I do. I now know that. Right. 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 What yeah. Paul is also uh, what you just read is Paul is giving us an application uh, to put in practice uh, by us to walk in the spirit is the only way we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because if you go to the very next chapter in Romans chapter seven, around about verse 13, when he said, uh, uh, which is verse, not verse 17, I'm excuse, excuse me, verse 13. He says that, uh, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Verse number seven, 23, excuse me. But I say, but I seen another law in my members. Um, in that phrase, in my members, he's talking about in our body, um, in our flesh, in our simple nature. Warn against. Warn against means uh, trying to resist the law of my mind, which is that it's the word of God that we know to do right, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So I agree with you. Uh, the way of an escape that goes back to what you just said is that if we walk according to the spirit is our way of an escape from falling to temptation. I think we all have been to that point where we have at, uh, failed at times and we have succeeded. The times we succeeded was because our mind went back to that which we have learned. And, and, I'm a, and aren't you? You're right. And that's uh, okay. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to address what uh, Melanie wanted us to address, and that was temptation. And I also promised that I would answer the question, how do I stop doing the same sin that I've been struggling with forever? Okay, here's the point, y'all. We, first of all, 
have to fix our attitude about temptation and sin in the first place. And if we start by understanding that when I yield to temptation, I have chosen to follow and serve Satan rather than serving God. And if we would, if we would start, if we would understand that and, and adopt that attitude, that's going to help us to keep from sinning. Okay? Now, does that mean we're going to solve sin in our lives forever? It, it can happen. But we all know Satan just keeps coming. He tries to figure something out, right? Okay, so let me, let me, and then verse 21 says, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. All he says is, y'all, it is possible. It is possible for us, and Archie just said it. He said, there have been times when I've fallen to sin, and then there have been times when I said, nope, I'm not going to fall. If you can do it once, you can do it twice. And you can do it again. That is, be successful against the temptation, just like Jesus was. And by the way, y'all do remember we said when we are successful and don't fall to temptation, the scriptures teach that the angels came and ministered unto him. Ooh, you talk about, you talk, y'all know it. Y'all had that feeling when you haven't sinned and you knew you were tempted. Didn't you feel good right afterwards? Woo, yeah, that hallelujah moment, Susan. Yes, absolutely. My hallelujah. It, 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 just, it, it, it happens, y'all. The angels come and they minister to us. Okay, but look, 1 John 2, 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, wait, 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 wait. Archie, do y'all hear this? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I'm trying to change our attitude toward sin when we sin. Okay, uh, hold on. Chase, text something in the thingy. Um, let me see. We have, we have to have the fruit of the Spirit to not sin. Right, we absolutely do. Um, y'all, the okay. Every one of y'all had parents. Did any of y'all have parents that that taught y'all stuff and and tried to to tell y'all how to do right? Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Okay, Gwendolyn. Did yes. you go to college, Gwendolyn? No. I can tell. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> no, okay, but but okay. I, no, I was I was gonna use somebody who's gone to college to make a point. Um, Avilia, did you go to college? On me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you went to college. All right. Did you have parents that tried to teach you right from wrong? Yes. Before you went to college. Uh huh. And when you went to college, did you do wrong? Honestly, no, I did not. Oh, darn. Somebody who did wrong when they went to college. <laughs> I'm already lying. Brandy? Okay. Yes, sir. Brandy. That's me. Uh -huh. Okay, Brandy. Did your parents try to teach you right from wrong? Well, honestly, we didn't have certain conversations. Um, and so the, the conversations that I did have, they, they took place in my like, teens Bible study class at Greenville. Okay, um, I need somebody. Um, I need somebody. Okay. That's, okay, my bad. Let me put no, 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 no. I was, I was. Okay, I need somebody <laughs> whose parents tried to teach you right and from wrong, and then you went to college. Who? Somebody. Come on. I, I guess I'll, I'll take uh -huh. the bait. I'll okay. take the bait. Okay. Hold on, Alicia. William wants to speak. Okay. So okay. William, okay. William, your parents and your daddy is a minister, and your mama's a minister's wife. 
and they tried to teach you right when you were growing up, right? True, but I mean, we can let Alicia do this if she really wants it, man. Okay, I'll let both of y'all do it, but but William. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but William. Okay, William. When you, went off college, when you went off to college, did you ever hear your parents' voice when you were trying to do bad? When I was trying to do bad? Yeah, when you were tempted to do something or somebody offered you something or whatever. Did you ever hear your parents' voice in your head? All the time. I still hear it now. Okay, Alicia, did you hear your mother's mm -hmm. voice? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, <laughs> Sister Merlene, you failed. <laughs> but but, but y'all, do y'all get my do y'all see where I'm going with this? Uh-huh. See, it is okay. Chase talked about the spirit of God. Y'all. The spirit of God comes from his word. Yes, sir. The sword of the spirit. That's the way of the state. And, and <laughs> when we have been talked to by God and we go out there in the world, the world is going to try to say, try this. Come this way. Remember the, the graphic we had before this week? Come this way. Okay. Uh, do come this way. Let me let me let me switch graphics here. Y'all bear with me one second. I know it's time to go. Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, go this way. No, over here. Okay. Look, the spirit of God speaks to us and tries to get us to stay with God. But what we do, <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that. There's a process that takes place. Um, let me see what time it is. <clears throat> 8.01. Let me give y'all something to chew on about this sinning over and over again. Okay. I keep from doing the same sin over and over again. I'm just going to give you this and let you chew on this and come back next week. Y'all okay with that? That's fine. Yeah. This time is up. Okay, look. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with fornicators of this world. We talk about fornication here, obviously. But he also says, nor with a uh, covetous or idolater or railer or drunkard. Okay, the idea of this passage is that we, because you know, we say, oh, I slipped, I messed up, and I committed fornication. That's one thing. But to continue in that act, that means you are a fornicator. You didn't just slip in that temptation. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, the scriptures teach that uh, it says, and fornication, let it not be once named among us, right? And in uh, Ephesians 5 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. Okay, so there is a difference there. Okay. Let me help you with something, Alicia. And you probably already know since you no longer have that problem. But let him that thinketh he stand to take heed lest he fall, Alicia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Second, Second Corinthians 7 says, look at this, for godly sorrow worketh yeah. repentance yes. to salvation, not to repentance. be repented of. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Alicia and everybody else on this call, because I was with Alicia. I, no, I wasn't with oh. Alicia. Y'all let me let me, <laughs> let me clear this up. I'm a tell. <laughs> I was not with Alicia when she was oh, continuing to do that same sin. But I was with her in spirit because yeah. I went down that path myself. And it wasn't sex. I ain't gonna, it ain't none of your business what it was. Right. It ain't no okay, business. but y'all, let me tell you. And I was so frustrated with myself, I kept doing the same sin over and over and over again. And then... The Holy Spirit slapped me upside the head with this passage of scripture, y'all. 
And what this passage of scripture said to me, you'll find out next week. <laughs> I want to see what this passage of scripture says to you. Second Corinthians, write it down, record it on your phone. Second Corinthians 710, for godly sorrow worketh repentance. Yes. To salvation, not to be repented of. Come back next week. Let's talk about this passage because I think this is the key to repenting mm -hmm. of that sin that we keep doing over and over and over again. That's your assignment. Should you choose to accept it? <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties. I don't know why screen sharing was not working tonight. I had all these scriptures up so y'all wouldn't have to try to find it in your Bibles or whatever. But I think you got the gist of it. And I know I've given you a lot to think about and chew on, but especially y'all, think about my statement. When we fall to temptation, at that point, we don't love God. God bless you. Good night.